Welcome to the Earth Mama Living Show with Jackie O. Sweet and weary head. Jackie O teaches creativity and healthy living. Night is falling. To love yourself and feed your soul. You've come to Jenny's end. Right here on Haggy Shack Radio. Sleep now. Dream of the ones who came before. Jackie, what's on the menu for tonight? They are calling from across the distant shore. Good evening, Haggy Shack Radio listeners. It's June 6, 2016, and you're tuning into a new turning, tuning into a new show every Tuesday night, 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. I am Jackie O with Earth Mama Living. This is the place where stomachs growl, eyes open wide, and bodies get healthy. We spark change, encourage love, and take time to figure things out because we all need each other to learn our own truths. Get out your pen and paper, grocery list, and open up your minds about food, cooking, and home living as we dive into our two-hour show coming to you live from the Sonoran Very Hot Desert. So pass on the word, tell your friends, and let's get our awakened Haggy Shot family growing. And Earth Mama Living is every Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Tonight's show is produced by Haggy Shack Radio. Lovely Miss Colleen is behind the scenes, who's stirring her pot of vegetable stew and chomping on her gluten-free Nerdy Gazzetti bean bar. You can get here by visiting www.haggyshack.com. And that's H-A-G-G-I-E-S-H-A-C-K.com. By the way, tonight's intro is by Jim Nichols, Music by Annie Lennox from the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Guess what? Haggy Shack Radio can also be found on Facebook. You can also follow me on Twitter, YouTube, and Etsy at Earth Mama Shop. And on Facebook and Instagram at Earth Mama Living. And that's spelled E-A-R-T-H-M-O-M-M-A-S-H-O-P. On HaggyShack.com, you can find the entire upcoming list of shows. Right now, I'd like to send a holler out to our Earth and Beyond friends in our live chat room. And, of course, to all you listeners who are tuning in at another time. If you'd like to join us in the live chat, go to HaggyShack.com. Haggy's chat room is a place where you can express your thoughts and concerns freely, as long as you do it with respect to all who gather here. Here are the rules. To comment and ask a question, you must be a registered user. Anonymous folks will not be dressed. addressed. P- please type all questions in capital letters so that it stands out and we don't miss them. And finally... We are a donation station here in Haggy's house. So if you like what you hear and want more of it, send your PayPal Earth goodness by clicking that donate link and follow through. I'm sending a special shout out to Nancy and Wald at Cosmic Reality for the Shungite fantabulousness madness of the epic kind. Be sure to check out their website, www.cosmicreality.net. There, you can find all your Shungite fabulousness. This week on Haggy Shack, we have several shows. Stay in touch with the show schedule so you know what's coming. Briefly, to recap what's happening this week, uh, in case you missed it, last night was Dino and Ted's two-hour little monster movie podcast at 7 p.m. Pacific. And then tomorrow, Dino and Yvonne Palermo will return for Spooky Pants show at 7 p.m. this week uh, with Nick Keen, paranormalist, survivalist, and outdoorsman for plenty of paranormal and spooky talk. Friday night, the fabulous Groovy Bean show with Yvonne Palermo airs at 6 p.m. Pacific. And remember, the last Thursday of every month, is Yvonne Palermo, Justin Deschamps, and Emma Gold for Looking Out from Within. 
Tonight, lovely Miss Palermo, Miss Groovy Bean herself, who is a buddy of mine, is joining in with us tonight for the Earth Mama Living Show. Do yourself a favor and visit her awesome website at groovybean.com. And check out her whole bean show schedule. That's C-R-O-O-V-I-E-B-E-A-N dot com. Welcome, Groovy Bean. How in the heck are you? What up, Jax? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. There was some feedback going on there. I'm not sure if it's your end or Colleen's. You might want to check it. Uh, I don't know if who, who, just saying, just throwing it out there. I don't know if the audience can hear it or not, but it was feeding back on my end. But I am, <gasps> it was Nutty Gazette and Colleen. You naughty, naughty, naughty biscuit. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for uh, having me join you again. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, because it's always a pleasure having having a show with you and talking about our great stuff here that we've got going on tonight. Uh, what I wanted to know is if you mm-hmm. could talk a little bit more about Friday's show, since I don't know a whole lot mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, uh, this Friday, uh, introducing the Cards of Life, Gina E. Jones. She's pretty cool being, uh, the cards of life. It's a, she's a cardologer, certified Ooh. magi counselor and the founder CEO of the cards of the life. Yeah. So cardology is like tarot cards, but it's one of, it's, well, it's based on the first types of tarot cards. Tarot cards stemmed off of the cards of life. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, is there, do you want people to go to a website and sure. maybe get their card before they join sure. your show? Yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah, if you want to check it out and I'll copy and paste it in the chat, folks, it is the cards of life.com. And what you can do is you can go there and you will see a little, little bit. Well, actually there's a lot of information there about the cards and about your personal cards. You can get your birthday chart. You can find your life card, your critical years, your birthday and your, and about, um, kind of the meaning of life based on cardology. And we're going to totally dive into that. So let me go ahead and put that in the live chat. Yeah. So it's going to be a fun show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before I talk about tonight's topic, um, and I was wondering if anyone's itching to hear about what the heck gluten is and GMOs and all that stuff. Well, just hold on a second because I have to say a big disclaimer. So just basically, I suggest highly that Everyone read and listen to everything, any information you find here from us and anywhere and take it in with discernment. And that I mean, look things up on your own to confirm what you need to know and what you need to understand for yourself. First of all, your body is different than my body. And my physician's body, for example, another thing is very different than my body. And so comparing even other patients to me is, it, it's easy to do. But that's where I'm saying here, it's very important to look things up. And that's, that's you know, for the past year and a half, what I've been doing to find out what's true for me. Mm-hmm. So not everyone has the whole truth, too. So when I look through and I see multiple sources having similar or exact information and it resonates with me, then I say, okay, that's true for me now. Mm -hmm. And then adopt it to say, okay, for now, let's just, for an example, I won't eat strawberries because whatever, you know? might be that maybe my stomach today or this month or whatever is not working for me. So until otherwise, this will be my truth. So Mm -hmm. it's sort of like, yeah, I mean, look at everything, take it on, but don't take it on as gospel for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Just because we are finding out new stuff every day. Yes. So does that make sense with everybody? I hope so. Completely agree. All righty then. So my (laughs) my thing right now is to do little astrology quickies, speaking Mm -hmm. Speaking of cardiology, uh, 
Mm. Um, this is definitely related to that. So we had a new moon on Saturday and I pulled a little bit of a, a reading from the powerpath.com website and what she said, her name is Lena. So I'm giving her credit for this. I did not write this, but it makes sense. So new moon on Saturday was at 9 PM mountain standard time. This is a marker for choice. Look at all the choices you have, have made or are in the process of making and observe how and what you are choosing. Are you choosing from fear or are you choosing from a place of courage, confidence and certainty? Are your choices for you or are they compromised? Or excuse me, com- yeah, that doesn't make sense. Compromised towards someone else. Let's just say, are they geared for somebody else? Are your choices made from a place of reaction or are you being proactive with your own desires and goals? This new moon is an internal time to process personal issues. So if you're around a lot of others, make sure you take some individual time to honor the new moon and what it can, how it can support you. The most important concept here is to keep a don't know mind and to give spirit a lot of freedom to bring you solutions that are creative and unexpected. Continue to trust that it will all work out at the same time as putting positive energy into the outcomes you do want. Blessings, Lena. So thank you, Lena, if you're out there listening. <laughs> so, awesome. so my question to you all this week is, did you happen to know that it was a new moon or did you feel, did you celebrate a new moon on Saturday? Mm-hmm. I did. Just, I had the awareness of it. I didn't go through my whole closet and dump everything because it didn't feel right, that kind of thing. What I do is I, I cleaned, you know, I did all the things that felt right to keep things in order. And then I went to a movie by myself, I got my hair cut, I did a little shopping, you know, time for me so I could just really absorb what is coming in. So I mm. am definitely feeling a lot of new energies, um, a new cycle coming. And I wanted to mention that the Farmer's Almanacs out there, they still sell those. Can you believe it? Mm. <laughs> I love that, though. Yeah. They used mm-hmm. to plant stuff, you know. When there was a new moon on harvest, <laughs> they used to go by the cycles of the moon and actually like the harvest times, which we'll talk about later when it comes to gluten and eating issues. Um, it's just, we, we, we do everything when we dang well feel like it now. Mm-hmm. Instead of listening to our bodies, listening to the earth and the regular cycle that is there, it's, we, it didn't forget us. We forgot it. So I look at it as symbolically a a really good time to plant new seeds and then let it go. Mm -hmm. And for me, (laughs) the letting go part is definitely the hardest part for me. Mm -hmm. So go to the bean. Yo. (laughs) Did you you happen to do anything this weekend that was related to that or did you feel it? I sobbed like an ever-loving baby. (laughs) I did. I sobbed like a baby all weekend. I I wasn't depressed. I wasn't, I was just like feeling the earth and the energies from the earth and with the moon. And then I honestly, I love gardening and I rolled a bit in the dirt because I like the smell of soil. (laughs) (laughs) Woohoo! Yeah, I I had a complete, um, I think Schumann was off the charts too for a bit. So it was a complete, um, cleansing of of some emotional states i believe <laughs> yeah yeah i i tell you if soil was a perfume you know i do i love the smell of dirt good glacial <laughs> dirt have you ever smelled glacial dirt like that yeah. dark dark dirt that's oh love it so but yeah <laughs> i found myself crying and just feeling uh just waves of emotions which is completely normal oh yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sure in it, it didn't necessarily feel wonderful, but freeing, maybe kind of like you're uh, letting go of old. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's, um, the feelings that go with 
this, so, the sobbing, the, those feelings for me and those emotions and, and this cleansing of whatever that was or the changes in energies uh, of the universe for me, I, you know, I don't, it's normal. It's okay. That's part of this hum, human three dimensional experience. So I think it's, I think it's fantastic that we can talk to one another about that and, and it not be because I think, you know, in society, you, people do, oh, well, what's wrong? What, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I'm just processing through these vibrations and these different states. And that's part of this human experience, right? At least for me. That's what I think. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And oh my goodness, everything on my desktop just opened. <laughs> there you have it. Like See? every file <laughs> on my desktop is like I'm opening and I'm <laughs> going to be in front of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Today's been a wonky day. Uh, they, you know, they're doing that. I'm over here for those listening and you don't know, I'm over here in the Cascadia Ring of Fire and they're doing FEMA's in the military. They're doing this week long Cascadia Rising event, and oddly enough, today around noon, most people's Skype and phone completely shut down, so I don't know what that's all about, <clears throat> but uh, very, uh, very interesting, and they're saying GPS outages will be going, so it doesn't doesn't surprise me, Jax, that your windows <laughs> just all popped open. Things are wonky, yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, here, I'm... I was all I was trying to do was try and find this link that I'm <laughs> posting. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, everything was going woo woo woo. Okay. So to 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 mention to everyone who is not familiar with the Schumann Residence, um, that is one of the pages that you can look to see. And if you're a geek like me, it makes sense. But um, <laughs> In in Yvonne, too, of course, I'm sure you can read it, right? That is Russia time, and it's showing the the height or low energy levels of magnetic Earth. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when it's white, when you see the white, big white blobs, that means there are bursts of energy. Yes. And I, as well (laughs) because you, we both feel that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us do. Yeah, that means batten down the ever loving hatches because it's going to be a ride. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mama Mia. <laughs> Mama Mia, Sopa Pia, I tell you what. Hey, yes. there's, so anyway, all is well. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not lost. Actually, it's, it's just kind of hilarious. <laughs> so good. Take your time. Heck. So anyway, so there's that. I definitely wanted to mention the, the Schumann, Re- Schumann Residence, because I, I like to go check on it. In fact, I didn't look today, mm. and it's, it had to have been something going on a little bit today. So, anyway, if anyone, anyone wants to go look at it right now and then let us yeah. know. <laughs> and sometimes, <laughs> just FYI, I don't know if you know this, Jax, a little window will pop up if you've got that Google thing, whatever, and it'll ch- automatically translate for you. So it's not in Russian. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't. Um, I don't even look at the words anymore. I just look at <laughs> <laughs> I just care about the curves and the colors. Brilliant! I love you, Jackie. I love you too. <laughs> no, the Russian's fine. I'm, I have translated, and I'm like, well, that doesn't help very much. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Oh okay, so to continue with my discussion of of astrology and earth and all that goodness last week i mentioned about if you haven't pulled your natal chart please do that it's so good for you (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's really good to have and once you put in your information you can create a pdf from it and you can print that thing out and take it with you to where every if you go to have readings done or anything like that it's really helpful. When I, here's a self thing. So, uh, in one of my polarity classes that deals with astrology, I showed my, uh, my chart to my teacher and she, <laughs> her mouth just dropped and she was like, okay, wow. Then 
Well, okay. So <laughs> my chart is pretty crazy, but mm. uh, I have like five planets in fire. Mm. So I have a lot of fiery energy that's hard for me to express because it's hidden in my 12th house, which is anyway, we don't have to go into all of that, but it is <laughs> very fascinating to, oh. especially if you can get someone who can read it for you and do that. So anyway, that's astro.com, A-S-T-R-O.com and go to the tab or header that says free readings and then go drop down to natal chart. That's your birth chart. So I think that's enough of that. <laughs> Unless we, anybody- should, we should do a show on our charts so we can Ooh. kind of walk through how to read these things. That's a, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah, for mm-hmm. you know, and like I said, I'm not an astrologer, but I know enough to 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 have a basic understanding of how I work. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, and absolutely, we could talk about the houses and what e- which each house means. You know, first house this, second house that. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you've got Jupiter in that house, what does that mean? It could could be very much, um, total, that could be a whole two hour call for sure. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so how did you all like? I know you can't answer me verbally, but I was hoping that you liked the meditation last week. Mm hmm. If, if that was good, um, you can always, of course, go back and replay it and do a grounding anytime. Hmm. And I actually, one of my, one of my YouTube videos, I did a chakra meditation. Uh-huh. It's called, it's called, um, what is a chakra and why, like, why the heck do I care? Something like that. Or why the heck do right. I need? So it's a real basic 12 minute chakra meditation. So. Well, that's a great video, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. You know, I'll get better as I practice. How about there you that? Go. Woohoo. All right. So, like I said last time, uh, please only do this if it's safe for you to close your eyes and be very relaxed. So don't do it while you're driving or trying to do something very important out there. <laughs> uh, closing your eyes. Um, yeah, so it'll help you be in our body, it'll help be in our body and as it relates to earth and our digestion that we'll talk about later. Okay, so here we go. So everyone, if you can, close your eyes. Take a moment to settle into a comfortable position with your feet touching the floor and your hands relaxed and your face relaxed. And notice now how you're feeling. How are you doing right now in this moment? And just acknowledge that to yourself. And let's start going into our body in all the different parts. Today, let's start at the feet. Just notice how your body is feeling all over when you bring your awareness to your feet. Let's send loving thoughts to your feet. Thank you, feet, for getting me through this day. The ankles, your legs, your hips, and then move up towards your stomach your back, your chest, sides, do a really deep breath in and let it out slowly. Give honor to your hands, your fingers, your wrists, your arms, shoulders, neck, head, your face, and your mouth. 
Notice any tension or existing relaxation you feel in your body. Notice how your body relaxes each part without any effort on your part. See how your muscles become a little looser, less tense, naturally, just because you're taking a moment to sit quietly and to give honor to it. Without any effort or input from you, without you even trying, your body is becoming more relaxed. See your thoughts and ideas about your own body and just observe them. It's okay to feel however you're feeling. Just observe and let them go. Embracing only love and confidence. What might it feel like to accept your body and love it and really love it just as it is? What if you felt okay about your physical self? Take a deep breath in. Slowly let it out again. Just imagine for a few moments what that would truly feel like, even just in this moment. Breathe in deeply and breathe out again. In, in, out. Breathe in, all at your own pace. In, out. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. It feels good to take deep, calm breaths. Now, I will say a few affirmations. You can repeat these if you wish, or just take them in as I say them. I am okay the way I am. I am Enough. I accept myself the way I am. I accept this body I am in. I am already perfect. My uniqueness makes me lovable. My body functions as a whole and is part of the grand whole. I love myself and all is one. At this moment, notice how you're feeling. All feelings are valid. Just observe them. Take a moment now to just relax and breathe in deeply from your higher self And then release back to the earth to recycle what you don't need anymore. Breathe in deeply from your higher self and release back to the earth and recycle what you don't need anymore. When you're ready to return to the present space. Embrace the feeling of calm whilst becoming more awake and alert. Slowly open your eyes. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Move your fingers. Stretch them out. Wiggle your toes. If you're able to move your legs around a little bit. And stretch whatever way feels right to you. 
to be back here with all of us and alert again so that you may be present. One last deep breath in and deep breath out. I'm going to say welcome back, my friends. I know I feel really grounded right now. Are you there, Yvonne? Yes, and <laughs> yes, and I think I sprouted some roots. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, a question that I would ask each of you just to think about. When I read the affirmations, because of knowing the way we all are as a whole in a society and things, you know, there, there have to be a couple of those in there that might be a little uncomfortable to hear or feel. I'll speak for myself. So I'm just saying, just, just think about what, what it might come up for you and just let it sit for you this week, maybe as an exercise, you know, to say, for example, for me, I'll, I'll be you know, I don't mind saying. So if I say, I accept this body I am in, mm-hmm. it, it kind of, I feel sh- like kind of shifty, like, well, not really. Well, okay, yeah. You know, so emotionally, maybe I will, or it's, it's just, it's just an interesting exercise to notice what's going on in your body. Mm-hmm. So. That's that that one. I think that one is a pretty good grounding exercise. Mm, that was wonderful. All right, so let's regroup. Uh, I wanted to quickly revisit a little bit from our show last week, which was our premiere. Yay! Mm-hmm. Did you guys like it? It seemed that people were enjoying the mm-hmm. experience, so I had fun. And I loved having Yvonne with us, too. Thank you, Yvonne. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. Um, and talking about stories and things and learning about... And, and I learned more about you, too, Yvonne, when we're, you know, talking about life stuff. It's, mm-hmm. so it's truly an honor. Uh, well, honored to be with you, my friend. <laughs> well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, before I go into our our first big topic, which is gluten... Um, I will mention that this is the Earth Mama Living Show. It is every Tuesday night, 6 to 8 p.m. on Pacific Time. And Yvonne Palermo is here with me tonight. She's co-hosting. And this is HaggyShackRadio.com. HaggyShack.com. HaggyShackRadio. Mm-hmm. There. How's that? There. Want to make sure, in case you're just tuning in, that's what you're listening to. And I'm Jackie O. Okay, now we talked a little bit about gluten last week and a little bit about my journeys about having to remove all gluten from my diet. Uh, They gave me a diagnosis of celiac disease, which is how I prefer to describe my experience. I don't say I have celiac disease. I don't own it. Mm -hmm. I... I I have been diagnosed with celiac disease. So my body is responding in the way that celiacs are are described as having. And you know what's interesting is this week as I was doing more research about it, I I realized that I was not describing it properly. You know, when when I go to restaurants and I say, "Hi, um I just have to ask if that plate is free because I have celiac disease. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, most of the time these days, they don't cross their eyes and say, what the heck are you talking about? They they seem to go, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, And then they'll go run and get the gluten-free menus. It's it's amazing. Mm. Um, But I've been telling and saying, I'm totally admitting this, I realize that I've been saying that I have an extreme version of a gluten allergy. Mm. No, it is absolutely 
not an allergy. I learned that in a huge way that it is actually an autoimmune disorder, which I already have another one. I have um, Hashimoto's. So I've got two autoimmune things going on. But I am so happy because this show is helping me to learn so much more about myself and hopefully help other people who have similar issues or at least would like to learn how to live and eat the way I do. Because some of it's, well, see, most of it's not my choice in a way, but I could choose to just eat whatever I want and just continue being sick and uh, get anemia all the time. No, thank you. Mm. Anyway, um, but I, I wanted to mention the disease concept because last week, I love what you said, Yvonne. Ms. Groovy mm. Bane on, <laughs> <laughs> on Thursday mm-hmm. about the stigma when you say, I have this XYZ disease. And then you, you end up walking around and you feel like you've got this life sentence of, oh, my God, I have celiac disease or I have Hashimoto's disease or I, you know, and so it, every time like just even now saying those words, I feel like bricks are being piled on top of my head. Yes. So uh, tell me, like, what mm. what is your feeling? Because you had an awesome way to describe well, that. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, and thanks for tuning into that. Yeah, we were talking about addiction and uh, how <clears throat> addiction has been classified in many parts as a disease. Uh, but for me and for my experience and I have, I have been diagnosed with, you know, with between my spinal stuff and all this other stuff. The word disease for me is a, I will not be defined by the word disease. Disease, uh, it represents any group of systems that are grouped together, um, and given some type of name. So, once you once you start labeling, I don't like labels. Because when you label stuff, you negate stuff. So the word disease itself itself has that. Honestly, it's its own form of fear porn, right? Mm-hmm. Because oh, so and so's got this disease. Oh, and everybody, oh no, oh no. Where if you let yourself be absorbed by that word, by that just by labeling yourself with the word disease. I believe that that creates a negative energy and a negative response for your body. And I refuse to be defined by that word. There's also where you can think of the word as being at dis-ease, D-I-S hyphenated ease itself. So where where the, the term disease means a lack of ease, okay, so there's a dis ease with something or harmony within your body so in a way i kind of like the hyphenated word having some dis ease my body is out of harmony but i still don't even like using the term that is associated with disease itself so i think uh because we know that the the power of the mind we know how powerful the the mind, uh, the energy of the mind and the energy coming out of your heart. So anytime, you know, if I, you know, oh, you know, geez, so-and-so just got diagnosed with this disease. Whenever your, your whole little energy kind of goes, oh, you know <laughs> what I mean? And your heart, literally for me, it feels like my heart would make it up, you know, a, a sad face. Right. So think of the impact that that has. I I just I don't like that terminology for me and um, being attached to it to me is just ex- would be accepting negative energy attachment. That's how I feel about that. Mm. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's a different way to own your own power with it, too. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's not going to own me. Um, right. right. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do everything I can to make it such that my body responds differently mm-hmm. to change the dis ease. Exactly what you said. Mm-hmm. The dis ease. Um, and 
I mentioned last week too, I'm a, I'm a polarity therapist and that's how we approach the body when we work on someone because not being a physician, you know, it's not, uh, for me to quote, work on the body when they have this X, Y, Z disease that is diagnosed differently and has a different way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Um, with the polarity, approach it from an energy aspect. The body is responding to whatever it happens to be. If it's attacking, let's just say cancer, for example, it's it's attacking. The body's attacking itself, you know. And right. Mm-hmm. And so, say for with with the celiac. So when gluten enters my bloodstream, or um, which we'll talk about in a little while here, but even personal care products, you know, like lotions and shampoos, and they make gluten-free everything. And I used to kind of roll my eyes a little when I saw gluten-free shampoo. Mm -hmm. you got to be kidding me. Well, I understand now. It's like, you know, if I can stay far away from gluten so that my body can heal from, you know, it's like someone coming at me with this, the, the gluten, and so my body attacks it. Uh, I mean, literally, I have, you know, like, the whole official, it's an autoimmune disorder that can occur genetically, predisposed people, where the ingestion of gluten leads to damage in the small intestine. Uh, it, it basically, it, it's, it's an immune response as if it were being attacked with swords. Mm. And so, it, I, you know, like, like, so our bodies literally are, melting the insides of our intestines Mm. because it feels like it's being attacked. Right. And so to get that out of the equation, then the body can breathe and say, oh, finally, okay. So it starts growing them back. Isn't that Mm -hmm. great? I didn't even know that you could grow your own little villi back in your intestines. Oh, the body's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. It is. Now, I haven't, I have not had pictures taken of that part of my body since a year and a half ago, but my blood work is all normal. Right. As of the last time I was drawn. So it's working. So my body mm. is, is behaving like a, like a regular quote, normal human body should respond to when it eats. Right. Um, aligning, aligning well with your, your wellness. So you chose your you chose not to empower the health issue by focusing on the particular ailment. Mm. You empowered yourself to place the emphasis on the natural state of ease. So mm. trying to be so being balanced rather than imbalanced or disrupted. And you honored your yeah. body. You honored you honored your body by focusing on getting it back to ease. That uh yeah, it's sometimes hard to do for things mm. that are less, you know, huge. Like when I say less huge, I mean, yeah, when you get when you get a call from the doctor and they say, you know, you absolutely cannot touch or eat gluten ever again. So that's a huge type of, <laughs> you know, but but for example, if I, you know, one day I'm just trying to think of something smaller. So when our bodies respond to something smaller, we might not give the urgency to it that something like that kind of a phone call would do. Uh, even simply, say, honoring our bodies about being too tired. Right. Mm-hmm. So when we're too tired, you know, we have all these health effects that can come from simply being sleep-deprived. Mm. And I just, it's like, yeah, it's embodying our whole, our bodies, literally, as this unit, we have, uh, in polarity, um, we have this ultrasonic core. We talk about this ultrasonic core within our bodies, and we have this torus field. We have this energetic energy around each and every one of us that if you've ever seen uh, iron pilings, you guys out there, you know how they, the little iron, what are those called? Um, but if you have a, a magnet and the iron it goes like in a circle and it comes back to itself. Circle and then comes mm. back. So we all, our bodies move like that too, really slowly. And that's, um, 
in my cranial studies. So our whole ultrasonic core is is breathing out and then it bring, comes back in again. And this happens too emotionally. Say we have a really awesome, amazing day. Well, to balance it out, you know, we come back to maybe not feeling quite so high about something. Mm-hmm. And this is where I see depression as being where that that polarity has gotten way out of whack where you know that normal state of you know I'm happy today I'm I'm good today and then the oh my god I'm I'm just a little down today but you know what I'm going to bounce back and you bounce back and you have this normal kind of curve where depression you know you have this maybe a little bit of a happy moment and then it goes deep down into really negative and that you know and I'm I'm oversimplifying but I think you understand what I'm saying. I was having a discussion the other day with a friend of mine about depression and how sometimes our bodies do need more than, than, than emotional help. And, you know, I had to go on antidepressants to get my, at least to a level of, uh, so my lows weren't so low and I could actually start to learn myself physically and emotionally how to get back to a little bit more of a curve where it's not dipping so low. And I got, I took myself off of them in a, in a very gradual medically safe way. Uh But I, that's, this is where I, I want to come in and say, you know, nothing is all or nothing here, right? It's, there's a balance. And sometimes you might have to make a choice of, I said I was never going to go on antidepressants. I'm not going on antidepressants, you know, and, and because I believe for so long, you know, I'm not going, why? That's just for people who are like crazy. Um. (laughs) So guess what? My definition of, of asking for help and accepting help was guess what? Antidepressants. I needed them for a little while to get myself to, a little bit more stability so I can bring myself back up to level again. Mm-hmm. It took a year. Hmm. Wow. It took a year. It's not the first time I was on them, but I, I it's like I want to I want to reach out to everyone and hug them and say, look, I mean, whatever it is you're going through right now, hmm. you know, to, to define it for yourself, you, you know, look at it, you know, and you might have to, Go against what you thought was right before. Hmm. And Mm -hmm. you might have to change your mind about something because actually it might be the thing you might need today. Maybe not tomorrow. And to allow, I mean, it just, it really goes in with this whole new moon thing because when when you put something out there like I need help, and you're like, but I'm only accepting help in this form. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, universe, I'm going to limit you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going into examples on that, but I mean, I'm. Have you found, Ivan, like mm. some things come across your whatever table that you're mm. you thought at one time was not. A solution, but it turns out, wait a minute, maybe that is actually, I don't know, just, I totally am making this question up. I hope you don't mind throwing this oh, at you. that's okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm thinking, so at, re-ask me again. Have, have okay. I ever come across something that I didn't think I would be doing that I had to do? Well, yeah, but you, huh. you, you know, say, say you asked for help in some way or another, or you said, I wanted to do, I would, I really need to do or get this. Like for me, you know, I, I don't want to be depressed anymore. Uh I'm so tired of being depressed. And so I would go to therapists one after another and each one of them was, were not helping Uh me. Uh And it, like the universe kept saying, no, no, Uh I told you no. (laughs) Right, right. And finally, just, you know, it's a spiritual thing, I suppose, but just like, okay then, what? (laughs) <laughs> and then to be open to something that I didn't think of this, right. this this time around, and then to happen to pick a doctor who said, "Hey, 
I know of an antidepressant that doesn't have as many side effects that some of the other ones do. Mm. Mm. Are you open to that? And mm-hmm. I said, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Which no. is good. That's advocating. And I said, yes. no, but I said, I really need help. And so in this moment, if you're saying that, I have a feeling I need to take a leap of faith here. And I was like, my my nails and my fingers were like burying themselves into the chair I was sitting on because I was so mad. I did mm-hmm. not want to go on them again. But where I wanted to be, where I was going. So it's kind of like asking or looking for something that was a surprise uh, answer from the universe. Mm. You don't have it's nothing. No, else. I there's <laughs> I'm trying to pick one. <laughs> I've got yeah, I mean, I I guess I would relate. I mean, I was on antidepressants too, but I got off. But for for me uh with the traumatic brain injury uh you know, just the other day, and this might not answer the question, but this is how I'm correlating it. I, you know, I, my frustration level, frustration level, I had, I, I, through TBI, you get different levels of it. And, you know, I was frustrated with, with trying to figure out my, 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 what is it called? The printer, printer for my artwork, right? So I'm trying to figure this out and I, 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 I I was like, okay, universe, you know, what, this is not working. I'm frustrated. What, what is it that I need to focus on right now? What are you, what are you telling me? How, I, okay, I get it. I can say no to this, but I can say yes to something else. Mm. So I had to step away. The universe said, Groovy Bean, would you <laughs> please step away <laughs> from, <laughs> from the printer? <laughs> So, and I was like, okay, I'm still, I still have this apparent frustration level, you know, and, and, and I had to, I guess the old Yvonne could do this no problemo. And I'm kind of like, well, I don't even want to do this anymore either. <laughs> so instead I said, okay, well, you know what? I can't figure this out, but I, you know what I can do is I can go draw another work on some more artwork. So I hope that answers. So. Yeah. So answering, you know, it, it, it's kind of like we learn, you know, with every, with a no, there's always a yes. Oh, I like there's, that. There's another option. There's a, there's another, there's another, just because, just because the answer is no right now doesn't mean that there's not a yes. So. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Well, cause too, yes, I mean, I could have easily taken you know, and I'm sure I was boohooing. I'm sorry, it's not very nice of me to say about myself, but I felt sorry for myself for a little while when well, I was why dying. Is that, why is that not okay? Oh, uh, you know, I'm giving myself permission to, for it to be okay. Mm-hmm. But it's hard for me to admit it, that I mm-hmm. was feeling sorry for myself when I was, when I admitted, or not admitted, when I got the diagnosis of mm-hmm. celiac disease. Gotcha. Yeah. But, like, part of me was, I was so relieved because I can't tell you how many years. I mean, I would, I would go through bottles of Tom's all the time. Oh, wow. And especially when I was pregnant, I had Tom's by the nightstand. I had them in my purse and I just, I could, I had heartburn and then I, I developed acid reflux from that. Um, so to get the reason, it's like the, you know, and I would stop eating certain things like spaghetti sauce because I thought, oh, it's just spaghetti sauce. I can't eat spaghetti sauce anymore. That's the answer. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. So when you were, so while, so you have celiac disease and you're pregnant, how does that affect the baby? And does the baby, would the baby have celiacs too or not? Not necessarily. Uh, it's not related as far as having the autoimmune disorder necessarily. I'm, that would definitely be a good physician question, but Mm. their answer would be, which I have in my notes here about it being genetically predisposed or it's hereditary. They say it's hereditary. Well, so because they said, uh, my, 
my child would have a 50% mm-hmm. chance was 50. Mm. It, it was a very high chance that she could have it also because I have that same condition. Okay. Okay. So I insisted I had her tested. She's fine. Woo-hoo. Thank you. God. Yes. Yeah. She's fine, which I knew, but I wanted to just eliminate that, like get it out of the way and then like move on with our lives already. Mm. Thank you. But so having it, yeah, at the time, um, I had, I, you know, what, and um, I'm aware here we probably will need to take a break in a minute. Uh, are you? How are you doing, Yvonne, Actually, I'm good. I got. I'm whatever you would like to do, my friend. Okay. In yep. a couple of minutes, we'll do. Maybe other people need to get up and stretch and stuff. Okay. Um. So, just that me. I did when I was pregnant with my daughter. I studied the Bradley method of birthing, which is. What is that called? Co, basically your husband or the partner, whoever you're with, helps you with the birthing mm. and the pregnancy, which was very interesting. But I was very much into the natural and eating and tracking my food and making sure I got enough protein and blah, blah, blah. And so my taking all those toms, I double checked with my doctor about, you know, the calcium, the extra calcium and all the extra medicine there and they said it was fine, so I don't know. Hopefully it's not later on down the road mm. going to bite me in right. the butt. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, it, it's been, it was a long time, but I think it was a gradual development of it, and mm. I think it's also because of our foods changing over the time as well. Right. You know, it's not always been like it is today. Mm. So on that note, we're going to leave you on a cliffhanger. <laughs> Woohoo! So, um, Colleen, would you like to set up a break time for us? Sure will. The song's about four minutes a little over. Well, that's not the song I thought it was, but <laughs> we are back. Works for me. I know. Okie dokie. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Yvonne, are you still there? Oh, yep, yep. Sorry about that. I was, oh, drinking, yeah. I was drinking my water and it and it <laughs> slurped off, <laughs> slurped down. <laughs> ah, well, welcome back, everyone. This is Jackie O with the Earth Mama Living Show with Yvonne Palermo co-hosting with me tonight, and we are every Tuesday night, six to eight p.m. Pacific, mm. on HaggyShack.com. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you do want to send questions in to us, please type in all caps so we can see it really well. And then they can alert me. Check it. That's right. <laughs> so we were talking about the glutinous gluten. 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 Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say this. You know, I had a week to put together more information about gluten and celiac disease. And the websites are not 100% consistent Mm -hmm. as far, as far as what ingredients to look for or to avoid. And so I'm going to just say that, uh, I remember at the beginning last year when I was saying to myself, well, okay, then getting out my pen and my paper, I'm going to start writing some stuff down that I need to avoid. And, of course, the, the the initial shock and the sites that are the biggies out there. And I'm going to I'm gonna reference celiac.org, and I'm not sure 100% of their true affiliation and stuff. I'm not going to say bad about them, but they're one of the big ones. They do furnish a lot of information that can help but they are there are things on there that are not true Hmm. uh in that they might be true sometimes they might be true they might not be true sometimes Mm -hmm. and this is where your discernment as we like to say absolutely needs to come in so i don't i don't think i officially defined gluten for everybody would you like to hear the lovely? Please. Here we go. Riddle me this, Jax. What <laughs> is this gluten? <laughs> gluten. 
this monstrous glitten. Okay, first of all, I'll, I'll also say right now, there's a lot of fear porn out there about it being like the most, most horrible thing in the whole world. It is for some of us. It's definitely, you know, can't touch it. And then other people saying, oh, it's totally fine. Eat as much gluten as you want. So you gotta, you gotta be somewhere in the middle or like me, I have to be a completely at zero percent. So for people who don't have celiac disease, whatever the disease, uh, it's entirely your choice how you're going to handle this. <clears throat> okay. Dictionary.com says the source is Latin, which is meaning glue. And it means the tough, viscid, 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 excuse me, nit- nitrogenous substance remaining when the flour of wheat or other grain is washed to remove the starch. Um, also, it's a mixture of plant proteins occurring in cereal grains such as wheat, rye, barley, and corn. The gluten in flour makes it ideal for baking because the chain-like protein molecule- molecules of the gluten trap carbon dioxide and expand with it as it's heated. Gluten is also used as an adhesive and in making seasonings. Wink, wink, alert, alert, <laughs> especially monosodium glutamate, mm-hmm. MSG. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say right now, do not eat MSG. Like you guys, it's that, that alone, mm-hmm. please research it because don't eat it. If you can absolutely... Um, I mean, they sell it as a spice in the store. I mean, that's, yeah. that to me is freaky. Yeah. That's freaky, freaky freakazoid. They have it on the mm-hmm. counter. Mm-hmm. Eat me. That's like the whole uh, Alice in Wonderland. Eat me. Right. Take the MSG. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that on your food. Um, okay, because so, I don't know what the heck that is. I mean, it's a salt. I know it's a salt, and it's in a lot of Asian cooking, and mm-hmm. it tastes good. But it makes me really, really sick. And I, I actually stopped eating MSG way before I even discovered the, the, uh, the autoimmune thing. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, now, I know it's interesting. I was trying to find the link that I had a year and a half ago that I was using. I would walk around the grocery store with this website open on my phone and I would walk around with my nose in my phone because I would Look at the ingredients list on labels. And I could not find that site anymore. It, it's on celiac.org, and I have one of the websites open right now from that main website. Mm-hmm. And they've gotten more generalized about it. So, mm-hmm. and to me, that's disheartening because, well, on one aspect, I find it disheartening because for maybe people first starting out and like specifically want ingredients that specifically mean gluten, but it's a totally different word. Oh. Uh, so I will do more research. I uh, see if I can actually find that, but they, they seem to have buried it, but I could list off the, the sources that they talk about. Um, but I also don't want to get boring. <laughs> No, we're so, learning. Oh, uh, and you know, learning is is uh, kind of hard on the brain sometimes. Okay, so I I threw at you guys celiac dot org. It's c e l i a c dot org. Um, if someone wants to type it for me, that's awesome because otherwise you'll hear me hear me clamp. Yeah, I'll toss it in there. No okay, problem. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. And then the other one is beyond celiac dot org. Mm-hmm. That was an interesting one, too. So just those two. And just be aware of lots of fear porn about gluten. Mm -hmm. Would you like to... It's like when when it started getting discovered and and diagnosed. Hallelujah for the people like me who actually did need to become a lot more aware and change entirely what we eat. Right. And on the other hand, it was taken as something to freak people out about. Mm -hmm. I mean, really freak people out. Mm -hmm. Because the way I took it was, look, 
we can make bread with wheat, rye, barley, many different grains, rice bread, spelt bread. Well, you know what it is for me? Mm. I have to eat bread that's not, that's just simply a different grain. And then if you, if you do a different kind of bread that needs to have a little bit of literally that gluten and kind of texture, there's this, uh, in- ingredient. It's a spice. It's actually, I think it's made from bacteria. It sounds gross, but it's really not. It's just a white powder. It's called xanthan gum. Oh. X, X A, X A N T H A M gum. Oh. So you only need a teensy tiny bit of that oh. in your recipes. And guess what? It doesn't matter that you are not eating wheat. Oh. So, I've seen that stuff at the store. I always wondered what you do with that. Hmm. It's natural. And actually, I need to find out if that's vegan because if it comes from bacteria, blah, 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 I don't know. I have mm-hmm. to. So anyway, look. in the oh. meantime, uh, I mean, you can replace things in your cooking to absolutely not even feel like, okay, eventually you're going to feel like, it was not that big of a deal of a change, and I'm actually having so much more food choices and options now because I've expanded my food to, like, every plant out there. And, I mean, I I was raised on pretty decent healthy food. My parents were, mm-hmm. were very, pretty aware of healthy foods. But in, even with that, for some reason, I developed this. So... Hmm. So it says uh, xanthan gum is vegan. I looked it up. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, it's a <laughs> by, byproduct of fermentation of glucose or sucrose given off by specific bacterium. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. Yeah, because I don't eat honey. I'm ve- I'm definitely vegan as of this January. So, but that was me a year later. So, um, okay, so I kind of was jumping ahead a little bit there, guys. But it, it goes with my story. Um, so what I wanted it to, so the most important thing, look, the, the fir- most important thing for anybody anyway is to learn how to label read. So right. you can pick up, you can pick something up from that just, that's in a box or in a can or a jar and I have to get out my reading glasses. I have to admit now, and <laughs> this, this, the font is so small now. They they have everything is so small because they're also shoving so much uh, right. in there. Yeah, they don't want you to know what's in the food you're buying. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's my best advice about label reading: is yes, you could go and. Learn about every single additive that they put in food, like fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Well, I heard that they're changing the name again, and they're making it uh, not the same thing. I and mean, it's a different name, but it's the same product, the high fructose right. corn syrup. And I don't touch that stuff with a 10-foot pole. But mm-hmm. I um, Natural sweetener, yeah. that's what they're calling it. They're calling high fructose corn syrup, and oh, that's the natural new name. Natural okay. sweetener is the new and, name. Yeah. Wow. And that I think I think you might have told me that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so listen, you can go and you could read about each of these things, and then they go and change it again. So, instead, bum bum bum. <laughs> what if we freaking make all of our own food ourselves? With all the raw ingredients, we know what they are mm-hmm. as best as we can. And every once in a while, pick up a processed food. And when I say processed, I mean something from a box. I don't care how mm-hmm. organic it is. I don't care how non-GMO it is. That's an awesome thing, by the way, yes, and we're going to get into that. Uh, but if it's in a box, if it's a can, it's a jar, it's been processed still. And the least processed that we can get our food, the better it is and easier for our body to digest. 
that's, is that not, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. But I, I could not contain in my brain the amount of information. I am not, you know, I'm not a food scientist and I'm not going to sit there and learn all the different, it, it made me mad. You know, yeah. I, I was telling you last week, um, I would literally be shopping and I would sit down on the floor and just ball my head off. Oh, because I knew I, I could not eat anything in that entire row, probably. And if I made a mistake and I, tr- I tr- tried something because I wasn't sure, which, by the way, I can't do, um, I get sick and then I can't eat that. And it just got so frustrating. And just I would. Yeah. I mean, I just would break down because, I mean, besides the fact that I I was in extreme depression recovering from that. So mm-hmm. so so I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to learn and uh, teach myself even more how to cook. And I already cooked before this. So I think I had a pretty good start. And so I apologize to other people who have to start from not learning how to cook yet. But to learn how to cook the basics, I mean, like to like yesterday's dinner, I boiled some potatoes and threw some veggies in it. And it, it's so yummy and it's just so good for you. And it might sound boring, but every part of it is just, it's right Mm -hmm. to to take a potato. And you know, when you go into the whole um, produce section, all of these things, I know everybody knows shop on the outside of the store, you know, like, Avoid the middle aisles. Well, right. it may be because I know why now. It, mm-hmm. I definitely take it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that was my quick thing about, you know, learning how to read labels. Okay. Number one, certified gluten-free logo. Mm-hmm. Number one, absolutely. That means, and who knows what, I don't know what source or stamp it comes from. I'm, an, I'm just having to trust it. Mm. You know, it's like discernment, right? Right. Maybe, maybe I'll find out in next week that the certified gluten-free logo isn't uh, what I thought it was either. I don't know. But right. for today, for today, I rely on it heavily. Certified gluten-free, number one. And... Actually, in last week's video of our show, I put, I flashed a couple of the logos that I'm mentioning here, by the way. Mm-hmm. So there, go watch our show from last week. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Um, and the other one is if you are vegan, which I am now, as a certified vegan logo. Mm-hmm. Certified vegan. Okay. Um, and then non-GMO. Non-GMO, they have this beautiful rectangle box logo, which you can't miss. So if I see those three logos, I'm Mm. buying. I'm buying it. (laughs) You're in. (laughs) I'm I'm putting that in my cart. And if it's processed, fine. But guess what? I'm eating it. (laughs) Right. I can. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's like that whole, you know, red light, yellow light, green light. Yeah. So you just have to stand there and stare at the at the labels until mm. it makes sense. And okay, there are, there are two other things that they say on labels that I had to figure out. I had to do research and I found it somewhere. I don't know even know where I found it online, but I've understood it now. Um, and they even do this on Amy's Foods, Amy's brand. Mm. Just okay. fine way. There's nothing wrong with it. There is a disclaimer that they are forcing companies to put on labels and not everybody does it, but thank God when they do. But way at the bottom, way at the bottom, under the ingredients, under the allergen warning, which I'm glad they do that too. Under all of that, it says this product was made in a facility that processes Wheat, soy, corn, blah, 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 blah. So if something for me 
says that it was made in a facility that was processed in, in a facility, that, but whatever, the process is wheat. Mm. I cannot touch it. Can't have that. I tested it. I didn't, I, by accident, I bought a couple uh, frozen lunches that had that on there and I didn't see it because it's so mm. damn tiny. Mm. But I, after my lunch, I was like, why do I feel like I've been cross contaminated? And that's the term that we use. Why do I feel like I now need Tums? Aww. Of course, I go dig in the trash. I look at the box and it's like lots of swear words because <laughs> right. I missed it. Oh, jeez. They, they disclosed it and I missed it. So mm. if you're sensitive at all to gluten, I mean, look for that too. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a new one they're doing. It is, it's, it's good. And Amy's is also doing this on one or two products. It says, this product was made in a facility that processes wheat, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, however, this company strives to maintain strictest uh, allergen quality standards and uh Something I, I can't remember the exact end of it, but basically saying they keep it separate. And uh-huh. Really, they maintain it absolutely well, mm. and that's I can eat that. <laughs> but they, so you just I look for those little blurbs and right. I give myself thumbs up. It's in the cart. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, you see what a pain in the ass it is? Yeah, it so really process, is. So for processed foods. That's what you have to endure is learning the chemicals and learning all the jargon and all of the laws that are being passed regarding mm-hmm. disclosure. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know now with GMOs though, even if those have to be legal, it, it the GMO labeling doesn't have to happen. You're right. right? Yeah. You're right. It does not. Um, yeah, I, yeah, and that I loved that you referred me to that movie. Might as well mm. mention that movie. Oh yeah, that was a good one, eh? M O M G G M O or G M O M O M G mm-hmm. on Amazon. I got it from my Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like three ninety nine. It was so worth the three ninety nine. Right. That yeah, if if I would highly recommend that for anybody that hasn't watched anything, well, even if you have watched something on GMOs, this this guy did such a great documentary, and even kids can watch this documentary. Yeah, man, was that a good documentary? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it's O M G G M O. I think that's how it is. Yeah, oh. yeah. If you take that in, that's how I found it too. But mm. so get this right. I'm sure you saw um, the numbers that stood out in my head. Uh, because he went around and did interviews of people in the street. Right. And 80% of all food in the United States is mm-hmm. genetically modified. Frightening. 80%. Yes. So, ni- right. and then he said 93% of all soy. Yeah. 93. Yeah. And guess what? I eat tofu, but I buy the non-GMO tofu, and it's not more expensive. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you just yeah. have to, mm-hmm. you just have to look and know and know about it. Right. But, um, you had asked, <laughs> you, you're like, make sure to check out the, the two types. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two types. Yeah. Right? Two types of GMOs. <laughs> so at the beginning he talked about, um, pesticide producers and herbicide resistors. Right. So it's, tell it's, us about those. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Woo. It's just like more friggin' insane science that is it. Okay. So I, I, I love science. Don't get me wrong. And I'm actually very pro, you know, moving forward in society with scientific study and making things better. But yeah. Pesticide producer. So the corn that they grow mm-hmm. creates its own pesticide it becomes a pesticide in itself right how whack is that very uh. what <laughs> you're feeding your kids pesticides Be- yep. in itself the corn 
is a pesticide. Mm -hmm. And then they make herbicide resistors. So it, so that the corn also resists anything they put on top of it. So everything around it in the field dies except for this resisted plant. Right. This glow in a dark plant. <laughs> but it's, but it's teaching, it's now bugs are mutating to be super bugs. Yeah. And, yeah. and weeds, they got weeds now that are super weeds that they can't even kill. And this plant gets like some, something like six feet tall now or something crazy like that. Yeah. Oil oh, and the, the guy who wrote the film, and I apologize, I, I did not copy any, get, get huh? his name. But it was so funny because the, the farmer was telling the guy, yeah, that these weeds are, they can't kill them. They, they're super weeds. Huh? Yep. And the guy was like, can we eat them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, can we at least eat them? No, we can't. No. It was like completely 100% no, no nutrition whatsoever in it. No. No. Well, plus it's modified, so thank you. It's no. Frightening. Absolutely. Okay, so <laughs> let's tell the story about he goes out fishing. Do you remember that part? Oh, well, <laughs> remind me. But, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, so he goes out, he's like, I'm yeah. tired of, of doing all this research on GMOs. I just want to take my family and my oh, kids yeah. right, out right. to the mm -hmm. wilderness and go fishing. So he's like, yeah, we're, I don't remember if it was trout. I think it was trout. So mm -hmm. they go out to the state park and they're like, they caught some fish. They had some really yummy fish that night. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he was like, wait a minute. And he saw a sign that the fish were bred bread there at the park mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god his poor wife no. <laughs> no 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 i i i love it i love it we need people like this so he he goes to where they breed the fish and he right. asks the dude he's like hey what are you feeding the fish right and the guy's like this stuff this pellet and it's blah 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 Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, what's the company name? He calls the company. The, the pellets are GMOs. Mm hmm Yes. So like, he, yep, inadvertently ingested the fish that he was so proud to catch with his kids that have been fed the GMOs the whole time. Yeah. Right. Ah. <laughs> and he was in shock. Yeah. Yeah. And then? You know, and this is where, this is where, I, I mean, I love the part in general. And, yeah, I apologize. I probably spoiled the movie, but you got to watch it. You got to watch it. Mm -hmm. But where he, he's like, look, we can research. We can learn. We can take all this in. We need to be aware. And then also, he had to go back home and live a quote, normal life with his family to where like every single thing in his house cannot be GMO free. I mean, right. it's just not possible today. Right. Well, and I liked what stirred up the documentary was that the kids, the, 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 the guy, the, the, the guy's son has, has a passion for collecting seeds. And that's how the uh, whole thing started was his little boy would save the seeds from all of their plants. And his son kept asking questions about the seeds. Where do they come from? What, you know, all seed storage. And then, and that's where they, it was really, I was, I was moved by how passionate the father was to his son's needs about how he took care of his seeds. He would, I mean, he kept, he loved his seeds and they went and researched, uh, heirloom seeds and, and then, uh, um, the seeds that are being stored. Is it, was it Antarctica somewhere? I think, um, you know, the Norway. big seed storage, Norway, sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, in Norway, they have the seed storage and how they have, and they have heirloom seeds, but they also have GMO seeds there. So it was very interesting how they separated it all out. Yeah. Mm. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was def Yeah, I love that. And, and for him to honor his child uh, and his passion at three or however old he was, that was yeah. awesome. Totally cute. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah very much. Um, well, so I'll mention... Because this is definitely gluten and GMO related. 
So, Rhett, isn't that a question that people say? Well, is gluten, is it caused by the GMOs? or? Well, I still didn't find the the history, and I would imagine that is buried and very challenging to find mm. of how it was. But um, I did watch another documentary. Actually, it was more like a, a a lecture on Gaia.com, which if you guys don't have Gaia.com, G-A-I-A.com, it's a $9.99, $9.95 membership per month. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's unlimited movies and documentaries. and Yeah, I love it. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, but I watched a show called The Truth About Gluten and Dairy mm. by Dr. John Dooliard. So there, he, there's a... Um, Okay. He he approached it with the glycemic index ratio, which is a scale from one to a hundred. Is basically how food affects your blood sugar. I know mm. a lot of um, diabetics probably have a much high level, more high level of understanding of it than I do. But I did see a quick little chart of basically to, to compare, like for low glycemic index, which is easier on your blood sugar so they don't spike so quickly. Uh, fructose, beans, seeds, walnuts, cashews, and most uh-huh. fruits. Um, and then it goes up from there, like regular white sugar, whole wheat, mm. uh, pita bread, ice cream. What is he saying? Oh, potato. Uh, and then high, uh, high glycemic index would be glucose, high fructose corn syrup, white bread, White rice, yes. Mm, mm-hmm. I highly suggest staying away from white rice, period, anyway. And isn't that, that the rule, though? Stay away from anything white, you know, white potatoes, white rice, white sugar, white. Isn't that, is that a good uh, rule? Well, I don't exclude potatoes at all. Mm, okay. Um, I mean, I see, though, that sweet potatoes and white potatoes are on his high GI list, uh-huh. which is interesting. But uh, for, you know, it, they're, they're, that's why... I hesitate to spend a whole lot of time on the, the glycemic index because I did find it being a little bit. Uh, I did, I would need to have a higher understanding of that science, right? Be, okay. Because I don't. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think you want to base your whole diet based on this chart. Um, I mean, I think it's good to avoid anything processed and like the mm-hmm. high high fructose corn syrup. You know, all those things that are in white rice. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, me being a... I, you know what bugs me? I hate to, I hate yeah. to interrupt you. No. You know what's bugging me the most? You know, who who, and when did they decide, let's start packaging up and put all this poison in the food? <sighs> I mean, I get the whole system and the money and all that, but, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. it just angers well, me. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, you know what? I totally hear you, and... I I have worked in advertising. Um, I've worked in graphic design for 20 plus years, 25 now, something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and I, when I was in fourth grade, wrote a paper on truth in advertising. Um, that remember that book a long time ago, mm. uh, Subliminal Seduction. Yes. Okay. Well, so at when I was 13, I was I was very fascinated by that book. I found it very interesting, and I felt mad i felt very angry that at even that would be we would be being whatever manipulated mm-hmm. by media all of these course. external things all these external things and who are these people saying they, they know you know and i'll relate to food well um my understanding is turn of the century they started uh publishing advertising about one women because the our clothing changed where our arms were being exposed. So, oh my gosh, get rid of that hair. And I have pulled ads. I've seen ads. It's easy to find on Google. Advertising during the early 1920s about body shaming us in the 1910s, 1920s about our underarm hair then. Mm. And I believe that this manipulation, this psycho, I'm going to call it psycho because they, <laughs> they're they totally war- trying to and successfully have warped our belief about our bodies and what's normal and yeah. um, what we should be eating, what we should not be eating, 
who should we talk to, who should we date, uh, how we should relate to our uh, significant other, mm-hmm. how we should be obedient. It's I, I'm holding myself back. I'm holding myself back because it, <laughs> it it angers me. And I know that in the 1950s, I remember they there was research on. Well, I know that it had to do with uh, World War II, and after coming out of that, they started advertising about how easy it was that you would just buy food now, buy frozen TV dinners. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. That's when that started and telling, and I was reading some of it about how they were telling mothers who were the, you know, predominant people cooking and Mm -hmm. feeding the families that cooking for your families is boring and not nutritional, that they don't know what they're doing. And so they were saying that, Take it easy on yourself. Don't spend all this time cooking and uh, spend all this money on all these raw ingredients. And they converted them. They converted mm-hmm. them to stop cooking at home in the 1950s. Mm. And I look at my, my grandma, bless her heart, I was named after her. She did not cook. I, I remember being mm. a little kid and I would go over there to visit and she's like, Bless her heart. I mean, you know, it's like, would you like some, <laughs> some Sally Lee cake or Sarah Lee cake? And I'm like, I love oh, Sarah yeah. Lee cake. No, no, right. no. But that, she just did not cook. She didn't cook. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Okay. Some people don't like to cook. You know mm-hmm. what? That's totally fine. But as a society whole for us to be taught that it's bad to cook for your family. Yeah. Well, and I would like to tell my armpit hairs, hey, let it flow and let it flow. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, that's the beginning, the beginning of, uh, the hurry up society. I think it was a test to see if people would eat those tinfoil wrapped TV dinners and the Sara Lee cakes to see, oh, wait a minute, we got a market here and oh, yeah, wait a minute, this will work. And then people, you know, hurry up and work and hurry up. Nobody's got time for this or that anymore. So. Yes. Mm. Well, and, and, you know, having, having a child and, and looking at her and saying, wait a minute. So one day, if I continue the trend, one day I'm going to tell her she's going to have to remove the hair on like half of her body. That's wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's when, I don't know when that, that awareness came to me in the past couple of years. I mm-hmm. thought to myself, that's awful. What? Right. She's beautiful. How dare me think, even think those thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I felt, I felt ashamed that I would you know, but that goes into, it's all that training. I've had the training all growing up. Right. Oh, yeah. Of course. Sure. We, all, we all have. Most, well, not all, but most. Most have. Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going to go there. So our, <laughs> <laughs> our bodies, you know this, I'm sure. But for everybody out there, I'm yelling. Our bodies are supposed to sweat. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So. I live in one of the hottest places in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I do not use boxed, bottled, whatever deodorant anymore. Mm-hmm. And I make my own because you know what? Actually, the recipe that I got, which is, by the way, from thrivemarket.com, which is an awesome place to buy groceries that are mm-hmm. non-perishable. But I, they had a recipe up there. You can also buy deodorant from them. Mm -hmm. But I did a test. It took me a long time. To be honest, it took me about a year to truly believe that we do not have to use aluminum deodorants. Mm -hmm. It took, because I did, would not believe it. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, those crazy people walking around and they, they like are really stinky and stuff. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) I like stink. (laughs) Well, but get this. I mean, when I, when I went vegan in January, mm. I, and I, and I mentioned this before, but I have been detoxing off of dairy and meat since January. And I smell different. I believe it. I do not have that, and I'm being blunt here, everybody, cause look, 
It's about our bodies and being proud of the fact. You know what? I have sweat coming off of my armpits right now. Yeah. And I don't stink. I I have I'm healthy and I put stuff in my body that's not rotting and right. is not, is not as chemical as mm-hmm. the other stuff that I used to. Yes, I still eat that stuff that's GMO. I I, I I tell you what, you sing it, Sister Jax. You sing <laughs> it. <laughs> I love it. It's, okay, I'm gonna tell you guys right now. Get off of the aluminum crap under your arms. And mm-hmm. I am a I am a strength trainer, so I'm around a lot of sweaty people at the gym, and I am not ashamed, and I I am not nervous mm-hmm. because I know that I smell just fine. And it's different. It's a different, I, it's not a funk. No more, no more pit funk people talk about, okay? <laughs> I'm square. <laughs> now, I like my pit funk. Listen, okay. That'd be a good t-shirt. <laughs> pit, funk. pit funk, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this this recipe, I'm going to give you this recipe because you guys need okay. to get off the aluminum. I'm serious. Yeah. This is four ingredients. Four. Okay. Four. Okay. Get a jar. I had I emptied a jelly jar. So I'm like, I'm going to use this jelly jar now because guess mm-hmm. what? I'm recycling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Six tablespoons of coconut oil. Okay. And... I, I buy organic and non-GMO best I can. Do the right. best you can, everybody. You just can't. A quarter cup or four tablespoons of baking soda. Mm-hmm. A quarter cup of cornstarch or arrowroot, whichever you've got. Okay. And then, this is totally your choice, what scent of essential oils to add. I do use- so. <laughs> <laughs> you can smell like green armpits. That's right. <laughs> ah, that's it. Stir it up, and you've got to you got to stir it every once in a while. Keep you got it because it's it's not homogenized, pasteurized, all that stuff. Okay. It's not chemicals, so you do have to stir it every once in a while. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I put I put like fifteen drops of peppermint, but be oh. careful. If you if you guys know about aromatherapy, mm-hmm. then use that because uh, you can also use rose oil. Talk about you know mm-hmm. um, seventh chakra, loving of the self. Mm-hmm. Uh, rose oil is really awesome for you know if you're not loving on yourself lately. Get mm-hmm. that rose oil out, man. Smell it. <laughs> it smells really yeah. good. Smell <laughs> this. I'll be lifting it. I walk around, you know. <laughs> I walk around like those Charlie Brown character that one that dances with her arms straight up in the air. I just walk around like this, smell my pits, because they <laughs> smell fan freaking fantastic. That's right. Listen, I was like one of the hardest people to convince to go completely natural deodorant. I've mm. tried Tom's brand. I've tried, what is that, face brand thing, whatever mm. that's called. I've tried all of the processed ones and they don't work as well they've also got propylene glycol which is not good for you hello right okay all right would you like to okay so here i'm going to give you 10 ways to increase digestion i think this is very important ready ready this is also from that guy oh before i do that um his name's dr john Julliard again d-o-u-i-l-l-a-r-d um, what I was going to mention was he was saying that, you know, we used to eat for cold season, hot season, and we would eat different foods because of availability of food, foods for the seasons. So he was saying that we used to grow four feet high, and it was only harvested once a year, and that now we harvest it all the time, and it only grows to 18 inches. So... Mm. It's got to have something to do with that concentration, uh, where the gluten gets concentrated just simply by that fact alone. Mm-hmm. 
And he's saying that in the past, before the 1950s, we would eat wheat and grains predominantly only in the cold season. Because Interesting. Like our bodies were yeah. more like a furnace. Yeah. We were physically suited to digest heavy grains, high carb, high fat. So depending on your ability to digest, his recommend recommendation is to eat low processed grains like sprouted grains, uh, breads, um, refrigerated mm-hmm. breads are quote alive basically because they still have life to them or they actually go moldy, you know, within a week. That means mm-hmm. it's good bread. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yes, I actually eat bread. I just found myself an amazing gluten-free and vegan bread. It's called Energy, E-N-E-R-G. Mm. That's brand new, and it's a sourdough, and it tastes... I haven't seen that one. Okay. Yeah, that one is in... Was that the freezer? It was either the freezer or the refrigerator where I got it. It was definitely mm. not on the counter. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 10 ways to increase your digestion, and that, that dude's website is lifespa.com, L-I-F-E-S-P-A.com. There are, he, and he, he studies Ayurvedic medicine for his work. He, I think he's a mm. chiropractor. He's got a DC in his, mm. in his, uh, credentials. Right. Okay. So, which is fine. Uh, Ayurvedic, Studies is something else that I definitely want to get more into, but um, here, this is these are all really good ideas, and I do not do them all. And in fact, I'm guilty, really bad about a couple of them, about not doing it. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. 15 to 20 minutes, be- and I could put this in the chat if it helps people, but um, number one, drink one to two glasses of water that have lemon juice in it, lemon squirted in it. 15 to 20 minutes before you even start eating. Starts up your stomach's acid. Just starts it up. He relates all of this uh, to a furnace. And mm. definitely, that goes all along with my polarity work and balance. Okay, number two. Eat or drink olive and oil, yeah, oil and vinegar, so like a dressing, like mm-hmm. on a salad, or lemon juice just mm. before your meal. So, and it helps your gallbladder to get it started working too for the fats that are going to come in your meal. Mm-hmm. So then, number three, drink warm or hot green tea with your meal. Okay, I love that. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> to me, I'm like, thumbs up. I can do that. All right. Number four, add spices to your food. Yeah. It, it reduces sugar absorption. I did not know that. And it increases our furnace, our, our literally our fire belly, digestion. For examples, uh, for example here, cayenne, pepper, peppers, all kinds of peppers, ginger, and turmeric root. And number five, eat, <laughs> it's a strange, eat half of a beet at least, and dark leafy greens with your meal, and it helps your bile move. In. That mm. definitely helps things. So I'm going to go back out there, and I'm going to go get some red beets and boil those up because... That's pretty yummy. Yeah. I made some tonight. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I did not know that it helps your bile. That's great. My mom used to make pickled beets and eggs. Yeah. Oh, Yum. Mm. So good. Okay. Here's a, a really different one that I had no idea about except for raw ginger being good. Number six, make and eat ginger pizzas. Slice up raw ginger root, dime-sized pieces, and salt them and add lemon on them and stir them in a little baggie in the fridge. Mm. So eat that with your meal. I don't remember if he said with 
or before, probably with your meal, I would imagine. Ginger is potent. It is, but I'm Woo. hoping salt and the lemon would help calm that down. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, hot mama. Oh, my I, God. Yeah. <laughs> That's some spicy stuff. Oh, man. Uh, okay, number seven. Sip salt and pepper water with your meal. Oh, oh, drink it right before or while you're ordering. So, like, if you're at, if you're eating out, so strange. I don't know. I could try salt and pepper water. Add a quarter teaspoon of salt each, mm. salt and each pepper to eight ounces of water, and drink that to increase your stomach acid too. Mm. But here's the thing. I'm thinking. <laughs> Don't do all of this at <laughs> one time. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't um, be doing all of this. No. So, like, there's just ten ideas. You're, How about that? You're ten burn ideas. it. You're... <laughs> so <sorry>. you're... <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be looking over you at the table and, like, fire coming out of your eyes. <laughs> There's going to be fire coming out the other end. <laughs> My furnace is going to be busting open. <laughs> oh, sorry. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I got the ugly laugh. I'm muting myself. <laughs> no, don't. Don't mute. Oh. <laughs> we love it. No, you got to keep that. It's good. <laughs> It's healthy. We need that. We need to, we need to laugh always. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here's number eight, which <laughs> I cannot do. Okay. I, I, I will not and I cannot, but I promise one day I will try, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? <laughs> okay. Number eight. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows I will never stop anything. But okay. The rest of it says, relax while you eat. And only eat while you eat. Sit. <laughs> sit. Sit down. And no standing, etc. etc. Uh, et no TV. No computer. No phone. Right. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Jesus said, Jax, you need to sit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number nine. I could do this one. Okay, do not drink cold beverages, especially with ice, during your meal. Mm-hmm. Not only sip warm water or green tea with dinner, because the cold puts out your furnace. It literally stops digestion. Yep. Dang, I, you know, I, I'm guilty of that too, but um, I, I can stop that one. Yeah, but you're in Arizona. It's kind of hard not to have ice in your drink. I would yeah. think. There. I don't know. I don't use ice at all. I'm not an I ice don't. person. Well, you know, it goes into, I mean, it is Ayurvedic, that whole, you know, like the whole body type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I'm a pitta, P-I-T-T-A, pitta. Mm. I'm a pita pocket. <laughs> um yeah, anyway yeah. and i think i'm not supposed to have ice water so i've been drinking pretty much the farm water since i heard that so yeah, yeah. but ice is nice when it's so 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 hot outside but i'm, al- I'm allergic to ice you are oh yeah t- tell us i know oh, i know it's 753 it's 753 okay. i'm aware but please mm. how is, tell us about that i it's it's a rare they call it it's some kind of rare they don't they don't know it's either autoimmune itself or but it's a rare uh event that's what i will say i'm not using the d word that we started out with at the beginning of the show it's a rare event um that the body goes through and it's called cold urticaria wow and yeah and i'll like i can't if i have if if an ice cube gets on my skin or something cold, I, I get these really, 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 it, it depends, painful hives. Isn't that wow. bizarre? I know, right? Yeah. What's that about? 
<laughs> that's, well, yeah. that, that goes with Eastern, well, Chinese medicine, Eastern medicine, I believe. Mm. Uh, one of my friends, I love her, Laura. Hi, Laura, wherever you are. Anyway, she studied Eastern medicine and she is so strange lately, recently. She said, Jackie, if ever I'm in the hospital or something, God forbid, you know, you, you come and I'm in the hospital or something. She said, but whatever you do, don't let them put ice on me. Yep. So yep. That's, that's kind of, um, so I'm wondering, it's like, are, are our bodies becoming resistant to stuff? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. But with all the surgeries I had, the first thing they want to do is put ice on your, you know, yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. So it, would you say it's like a, a condition or something that developed because of all that? Or uh, there's two types okay. of it. There's the, her, there's acquired, acquired cold urticaria that lasts like 20 minutes. And then there's, I forget the name of it, phil, philalial urticaria or hereditary urticaria, which can be really bad. So wow. yeah, 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 yeah. But have you had it your whole life? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. As a kid, not as much, but hmm. yes. So it's kind of kind of an oddity. Hey, I like my oddity though. Absolutely, well. embrace that. Yep. Embrace that. It makes you unique and lovable. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, <laughs> You're welcome. Go ahead. Though. You got to get to ten. All right, but everyone knows this one. Okay. Um. Do not eat late at night. Uh, last food before bedtime is three hours before you go to bed. That's the one I got to work on. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Really bad. Well, me too. That's my downfall right there. Well, well, here, what about this? I mean, my personal trainer always said it was good to have um, a protein drink right before you go to bed to help your uh, muscles hmm. heal overnight. I like that. Well, see... We have so many sources of knowledge, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. for me, I get crazy in my head, and I'm like, what the heck do I, bo- what, what do I go with? Right. I mean, it all makes sense. So which one do I pick t- today or all the time? Mm-hmm. So, so that's where, yeah, I suppose it's a really good thing to kind of like end with because you have, to, it's like picking your main thing. So for me, no gluten. Like, I, I can't eat gluten. So, it's like this, uh, I was, I'm a trained doula, but I don't work in that field. So it was like this, um, there, there was always this list of, like, the preferred treatment that you wanted when you went to the hospital, if, when you were giving birth, right? So it was like, one to, you know, the, 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 the absolute thing you didn't want. But it was like the first one is, for me, I don't, I can't eat gluten. I absolutely cannot, no matter what I do, that's the Mm -hmm. one thing that I have to always be honored, truthful, or whatever you call it, honorable to my body with. Mm -hmm. And then number two, um, you know, like making that list. But going slow enough, it's that transition. I mean, and strength training and vegan lifting stuff right now, that's what we talk about is transitioning if like one day one meal a day you do gluten free mm. or like one or maybe maybe it's too much maybe that's too much maybe you do one meal a week that's completely vegetarian mm-hmm. do you know do that until you can handle adding one more variable that's different especially if you have a big family or like some people they just have a lot of challenge in changing what they do because of whatever Anyway, so that's what I wanted to just say is be very careful and honorable with yourself about easing into whatever you're transitioning. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for having participated with me and learning more about you as well. It's been so fun. Thank mm-hmm. you. So I'm going to say thank thank you everyone for being here as well. It's been awesome. And Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. So my thing, eat well, love well, be well. Join us next week, please. And thank you. I love you all.